All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to replace the battery on this 13 inch MacBook Pro model A1706, mid 2017. Just a heads up, this model is somewhat of a pain in the butt to replace. So keep that in mind. <coughs> um, they tuck a piece of the battery underneath the motherboard, uh, making it a bit more difficult than the other models and a lot more screws to deal with. All right, so we're gonna be using a <coughs> Pentalobe, um, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. We're also going to be needing a T5 and I believe a T3 or Torx 3, all right? T5 or Torx 5. And I think that's all we're gonna need, but if we need other screwdrivers, we'll go from there. All right, first thing we're gonna do is remove the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screws. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and remove them. So we have the two here. All right, and then we have the four down here. So that's how I put the screws on my desk in order to keep track of uh, where I took them out. Um, even if some of the screws look to be the same size, it's always a good idea to put the same screw back where you got it. It looks like this battery might be actually bulging out. Yep. All right, so if your battery is bulging out, you wanna be careful, hold the cover down while you're unscrewing it, so that way it doesn't pop up and fling the screw out somewhere, <clears throat> okay? This will actually make removing the bottom cover a little bit easier, because I don't need to use a suction cup or anything. Um, there's already a gap here, okay? Um, but basically, usually you would get a suction cup and then you would pull up the cover a little bit, okay? And then what you would do, I would slide my fingernails down here. Um, you can use pry tools or whatever works for you if you can get your fingers in there. And then I push down with my thumb and pull up with my fingers here. And I can also help with this hand, just like that. I'm gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, just like this. All right, once you've done that, we're gonna lift it up like this. I'm gonna get my hand in here. Be careful that you don't scrape your fingers on the back here. All right, I get my fingernails lined up with that so that way if it scrapes, it just scrapes the fingernails. Then I wrap my fingers over this way, use my finger here, and I pull down while I push down with my finger, just like that. Sometimes it can be a lot more difficult to pull the cover down, so keep that in mind. All right, we're gonna grab this, and then we're gonna pull that side, and there we go, we got the bottom cover off. This is kind of gross. I don't know if it's just like sticky stuff that I can wash off. Um, but I'll see if I can clean it off. All right, here you can see it's pretty dusty inside. So I'm gonna clean that up and get all this dust out. And then we will continue with the repair, all right? So basically the way I clean that out is I use a toothbrush, loosen up any dust that's kind of stuck there. And then I use an air uh, electric air blower to blow all the loosened dust away. All right, so let me clean this up and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. You can see I was able to clean this off. Just use some water, all right, and dried it up. Looks good. All right, cleaned off the inside. Some of this stuff is like stuck there. All right, so anyways, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get to the battery. Actually, let me make sure it's off because some people like to leave their Macs on. <laughs> yeah, it's on. So I'm gonna force shut this off actually since I don't have their password. Okay. So I just held the power button until it shut off. I didn't want to show the username, so I kept that out of view. Anyways, we're going to peel this out here. Okay, so just carefully pull this up, slowly, carefully. Okay. <clears throat> this one has a little tape tab here, so you want to be careful that when you're pulling it up, it's not going to rip the cable out. Okay, because sometimes it might lift that uh, tape tab up, and then it will come separately with that cable. Okay, that's weird. This foam thing stayed stuck down this way. Usually it stays stuck to this and the screw is separate. So I'm going to peel this off separately and I'm going to stick this back onto here. Okay. So just like that. All right. So we got this out. We'll set that aside. Next thing we're going to do is disconnect this ribbon cable for the battery. Okay. So what you do is get under that little plastic um, flap. All right. And we're going to peel that back. Then we're gonna flip this latch here, all right? Once you flip that latch, okay? Then you can go ahead and grab, you wanna try and grab as close to the straight part of this as possible. You don't wanna pull from the spring end because then you could easily tear that, all right? So grab as close to there and then you kinda just wiggle as you pull and there we go. It looks like they put an adhesive to hold this down onto the screw so you wanna carefully peel this up. You don't wanna roll it backwards. You wanna actually like pull it um, this way as you lift it to keep it as flat as possible and you can also kind of hold this side make sure you don't rip it out and there we go 
Okay, um, actually, most likely this cable, because it's part of the battery, it doesn't really matter too much even if you do tear it, but again, I don't like tearing stuff if I don't have to. All right, so we're gonna switch to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. I'm gonna remove this screw here holding the battery tab in place. Both these pieces are important for the battery to function. So if this isn't uh, tight, if it's um, not in properly, if it's crooked, then your battery's not gonna work. And if this tab isn't on right, then you're gonna have problems. All right, so make sure to have those all lined up properly. All right, as you can see, it's still touching here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bend it up slightly. Okay, so now it stays disconnected. And then to be extra safe, we're gonna open up the MacBook and we're gonna press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This will, again, make it a lot safer to work on and greatly reduce the risk of damaging your computer. Again, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, let's go ahead and remove these two screws. These are also T5 or Torx 5 screws holding the battery um, control board in place. Okay, I think we're going to have to switch over to the T3 for these. Yep. Okay, so we're going to remove the... Um, trackpad but uh let's actually remove these first because i think these are t5 and yes they are okay so we're going to remove the trackpad screws here okay so there's four on either side and then there's two at the bottom down there okay so let's go ahead and remove all those screws again hopefully you guys are keeping all the screws in order because they are different size shape and lengths okay This one. All right. Almost got all the screws out. Okay, so we got all the trackpad screws out. You want to be careful when removing the trackpad uh, because there are little washers that can fall out really easily. Okay. So yeah. All right. We're gonna switch over to the T3 or Torx 3 screw screwdriver and we're going to remove the two screws here holding this in place um, we're very likely going to have to remove a bunch of motherboard screws and things like that so <clears throat> keep that in mind this one they tuck parts of the battery underneath the motherboard so we are going to have to lift the motherboard up all right so we're going to remove this metal plate once you do that we're going to pop this connector out i like to go on opposite corners all right one on the upper and then one on the lower one and then you kind of just wiggle and pull it and there we go all right when you peel this thing up it's very important that you don't just peel it straight back because they put this line here um, so that way if you just yank it it's going to tear so what you want to do is you want to get closer to the bottom here um, and then you want to keep this cable as flat as possible by pulling it this way as you peel it up and then you keep one finger here so as you peel it um, it won't just yank and tear itself out all right so just like this it's a little bit extra awkward with the inflated battery and actually wow the adhesive is stuck to the battery so there's no adhesive stuck on here anymore um, you don't technically need adhesive to hold it down to the battery but um, I'll put some adhesive back just so it sticks in place and doesn't wiggle around all right so anyways this adhesive I don't think we can get this adhesive off yeah all right anyways um, let's see. So we are going to have to take out a bunch of the motherboard screws. This model, there's no replaceable SSD or anything, but they do have this little port. If you buy, there's an expensive tool that you can use to access the data from this. Um, I've only had like one person that ever, ever needed that. So yeah. All right. And most of these screws are T5, I think, except for this one here, these, and this three screws. Okay, so I'm going to try with just removing motherboard screws and see if we can lift the motherboard up enough to work on it, but there's a good chance we're going to have to disconnect like cables and stuff here. So we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and get that screw out. I'm going to get this one out as well. Okay, I don't know what this little connector here is for. 
But anyways, then we got a third one over here. Alright. And then we're going to... Is this also T3? Nope, that's T5. Alright, now we're going to switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. And we're going to remove the two screws here. Okay, so this one here. And this one up here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to remove those cables. All right, Apple likes to make stuff as difficult as possible. But, um, yeah, all right, then we got this screw here. And this screw up here. All right, so now that we got that, let's see. Can we lift this? Sort of. I mean, you can possibly get away with just doing that, but I think the chance of being able to do that is very, very small. So, oh, let's remove these two screws. There's two more T5 screws, one up here and one up here, and maybe that will be enough. Let's see. I don't think so, but it's, it's worth a shot. Makes it a lot easier. Okay. All right, let's see. Can we lift this? somewhat um, you could possibly possibly get away with that um, I think what I can do is I can get like um, something under here and under here all right under the fan parts and if that lifts up enough I think I can get it I think that will work okay so I'm probably gonna see if I can stick um, some popsicle sticks under there um, though you can get anything that can wedge in there that isn't conductive to electricity you don't want it to um, short out anything on the motherboard okay we're gonna slowly carefully open up the screen to drop the trackpad cable out and you want to be careful not to let this tip over so I'm holding the screen down and slowly lifting up the base then we're gonna slide the trackpad over to the right so that the cable can go through the hole and just like that we're gonna lift this out so here you go we got the trackpad out here you can see there's these little rectangular washers and then these circle washers here. So you want to be careful that you don't accidentally um, knock those off. They fall off really easily. So if you blew on this, they would all just fly out. So you want to be very careful. I'm just going to leave this as is. Maybe I'll use a toothbrush and get this dust off real quick and I'll be back. All right, so let's go ahead now and get the battery out. So to get the battery out, we're going to use this thin flat pry tool. It's very flexible, all right? It doesn't matter the material. I've had people use credit cards, but credit cards are much thicker, so it's um, a lot more difficult to do. This isn't a sharp knife, okay? It can't cut you, all right? As you can see, it's not a knife. You don't wanna use something sharp because you don't wanna puncture into this, and you wanna make sure it's flexible because you don't want something rigid because when you go underneath the battery, the tool needs to flex so that way it can like curve under like this. You don't want something that stays rigid like this and then it's basically gonna dig into the battery, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and scrape out the battery. So just get underneath like this and we're just gonna go ahead and cut it into it like this, all right? So you wanna only go straight lines. You don't wanna try and pull it this way, okay? So just go like that and we're just gonna continue just like this. Okay, there you go, we got that out. I'm gonna go down to this side and do the same thing. Okay, and we're gonna cut this as well. Just like this. All right, and then continue going like this. All right, this one's actually cutting out quite nicely. All right, then what we're going to do to make it safer, you're going to open this up. All right, oh, I should actually, whoa, I should clean that. That's really gross. Okay, um, I should clean this out first, and then I'll be back. You can see there's all the crumbs and stuff in there. Okay, so let me do that real quick, and I'll be back. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back, and let's go ahead and remove the battery pack all right so as you can see it's a much much cleaner now okay i cleaned out the keyboard a little bit the keyboard keys themselves are a little bit dirty i can clean those as well with like um paper towel but uh i don't want to risk 
usually it's okay. If you use a little water on a paper towel and squeeze it as hard as you can, make sure there's no water. One trick if you can't squeeze that hard is you just wet like half the paper towel or a little portion of the paper towel and then smush it all together and the water will kind of spread itself out. But anyways, we're going to do the same thing to get this battery pack out. I can't show the angle from the top here because then the other battery packs will fall out. But basically, I'm just going to go under here and um, cut between the adhesive there. Okay, so let me do that real quick. Okay, just like this, and I'm going to look from the other side to make sure I'm following the right path here. Okay, looks good, all right. Oh, more dust is coming out. All right, just like this, and we're just going to continue working our way over. All right, <clears throat> so there we go. We cut the battery pack out. Let's see if we can lift the whole thing. All right, so again, they did tuck this underneath here, so it's gonna have to pass over this raised bit, which is very annoying. Um, we're gonna try using, um, again, some popsicle sticks. Uh, actually, I can do it with these. Um, you can use popsicle sticks, or you can use like these kinds of things. This might actually work really well. Um, so let's go ahead and lift the um, motherboard up here, and then I'm going to get this tool in there. All right, just slightly, and that pops it props it up just a little bit. All right, and we're going to do the same thing with this side. Find a way to get under the motherboard like this, and then get a tool like this into there. Again, popsicle sticks would work too, but I'm going to use this because it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so next thing we're going to do is lift this up. And then we're going to carefully guide the battery out just like this. Oh, that worked. Okay, so there you go. We got the battery pack out. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to remove this because we don't want to risk damaging the motherboard. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to get this adhesive off first. Make sure to clean up all the adhesive residue. Oh no, it's going to be difficult there. But um, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to use a plastic razor blade to start this. So I go to a corner edge and kind of just roll back a little bit of this adhesive. Okay, you can kind of do both sides at the same time, I suppose. All right, and then once you get that started, you can grab that and slowly, carefully peel this back. Okay, um, sometimes they use uh, adhesive that just shreds to little bits if they use that on yours. I'm sorry, um, but you're going to have to just continually scrape it all out or use some very, um, I don't know, some people use some chemicals to remove the stuff, but I'm worried because the speakers are right there and you can actually end up damaging or dissolving the speakers. Some people use like, um, what do you call, like nail polish remover and things like that. I just use rubbing alcohol. All right, so let's go ahead and continue getting these out. So we'll scrape it down a little bit. And then again, grab that, slowly, carefully peel this back. All right, just like that. Same thing, we'll peel this back. Just like that, good. Then we're going to peel this one. Interesting. They actually put adhesive this way on it. Okay. Peel this up. All right. That adhesive is just going to break. Can we peel this off or is it one of those bad adhesives that just shred to bits? It might be the kind that shreds to bits. Okay. So let's go ahead and work on this first then. All right, you're welcome to fast forward over the, all of this, but I do this just in case the customer wants to see their computer and how I did everything. Okay, so we're gonna carefully peel this up. Okay, so the model I worked on, I think yesterday or the day before, <clears throat> the battery is so much easier to replace because you don't have to take all the motherboard stuff out. So Apple just purposely makes these really annoying things 
Oh, let's go ahead and peel this off as well. Peel this up. Okay, and then we'll peel this up. There's a lot of residue that's still stuck there that we're going to have to kind of clean up. All right, let's see. Can I get this out, or am I just gonna have to scrape it all? Can I can I get under and peel it? No, nah, it looks like I'm gonna have to scrape it all. It doesn't it doesn't roll up and peel like the other ones. I think. Yeah. Just freaking apple. Okay. Can I? Nope. All right, scraping it all off it is. That means more residue to clean up. But at least it's not too bad to scrape up. Usually when the adhesive gets older, it gets really bad. So yeah, this one's uh, 2017. So was that six years? No, five years? It depends when they bought it. All right. <clears throat> I don't know if Apple does what the car dealers do, where they're like, this is a 22 model, and I was like, but it's 2021 right now. So. All right. There we go. Peel that up. All right. There we go. Got all of that out. Next, we're going to get this out. Almost there. Okay. Turn this way and let's peel this up. Oh, this is going to be a pain because all of that tore. We'll see what we can do. All right. Just carefully peel this up. Up. Okay, so I'm gonna have to scrape this stuff a bit more, most likely, to get the adhesive out. Um, otherwise, cleaning it with rubbing alcohol is gonna be take quite a bit of um, elbow grease. So I'm gonna see if I can scrape that up a bit. All right. One more piece. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead now and see about scraping this stuff up a little bit just to kind of loosen the top layer so it's easier to work with when we use the rubbing alcohol. Okay. Scoop it up. Same thing with all these other pieces here. Okay, there we go. We're going to get some paper towel. All right, and we're going to use rubbing alcohol. I use 91%. 70% will work fine as well. Um, it'll just take more time rubbing it. All right, so we're going to get the 
rubbing alcohol kind of soaked into the paper towel. And then we're just going to kind of clean this stuff off. You can see it takes quite a while to get the residue out. Cleaning it, cleaning it like this. All right, I'm gonna flip this over to a clean side so there's no adhesive residue stuck in it. Get a little more rubbing alcohol in there and continue cleaning. All right, most of it's coming out nicely. Okay, go ahead and continue cleaning all the rest here. All right, this is being quite a bit difficult. We're gonna get some more rubbing alcohol here. Okay, there we go. It's kind of coming out better now. Oh, I forgot to remove this adhesive, that little adhesive strip there. So I'm going to do that next. Let's make sure to clean off all this residue. Okay. Let's scrape off this little piece here. Whoops. Okay, peel that up. There we go. Okay, clean that up. All right, looks good. Let's go on to this side. This one has way more residue, so it's going to be way more difficult. Um, this thing is kind of saturated now with the adhesive, so probably going to have to get a new piece of paper towel real soon. Clean it a bit more. All right, let's get a new piece of paper towel. And we we'll only use a little bit, so I just tear it and then get a small piece like this. Okay. Continue cleaning this. You can actually like get the um, alcohol on it, and then after that, you can use the scraping tool, and it scrapes a lot easier. Easier once you do that. Okay. There we go. Most of it's out. There's a big blob, and we'll just get that out. Of there. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue cleaning it. Now it cleans off a lot easier. Oh, that big blob is kind of moving around. Okay, just like that. Can you clean this? Let's see if I can scrape this up. that we'll open this up and switch over to a clean side again get some more rubbing alcohol on it clean that off okay okay now we're gonna get a clean paper towel and do this one more time just to get any residue off. Okay, and it's just a small torn piece. And same, we're just gonna add rubbing alcohol to this again. Okay, clean that off. Just like this, clean this off. All right. Perfect. 
try it up. Rubbing alcohol evaporates really fast, so you don't really need to worry too much. Uh, but I'm going to use this just to make sure. Try it real quick. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go ahead now and get the replacement battery. What we're going to do, I'm going to have to lift this um, board back up again. Okay, so we're going to lift this back up. So I'm going to get underneath here and get this back under there again. Same thing. All right, just like that. Go on to this side. Same thing. Get the tool under there. All right, so we're going to get the replacement battery. And Okay, placement battery looks like this. All right, they put a clear plastic on top to hold the battery packs um, together. Okay, so the bottom looks like this. You have the adhesive, and then the top, they put this to help keep it aligned, so that way when you drop it into place, it's not going to move around. All right, this one, um, because of the way they designed this, we're going to actually put this in first. Make sure this cable uh, remains on top. Okay, so we're going to slide it in at an angle like this. You might have to kind of bend this stuff around to make sure it goes in properly. Okay, and we're going to slide it under just like that at an angle. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, and then we're going to kind of drop the battery packs into place. As you can see, it doesn't really line up right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to peel this off and then I'm going to readjust it. But normally you would leave this on because it helps with the alignment. Okay, and if you notice, I peel this by rolling it back like this. Okay, there we go. All right, make sure everything looks good. I'm going to get this battery um, connector in first. Let's take these little things back out. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this lined up first. Okay. So I want to make sure that this piece gets lined up into place. We're going to use a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver again to get those screws in. All right, let me zoom in. Right now, um, dinner, my housemates brought dinner, so I should be eating, but I need to finish this. Okay, so I'm going to not tighten that down all the way yet because we are going to need to adjust it. Okay. Again, I'm going to just have it loose. That way I can move this around. And then what you want to do is make sure this tab is completely lined up. So it actually looks good where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold this down and tighten these screws into place. Okay. All right, and you don't want to bend the metal tab down yet because you don't want to connect your battery while everything is still disconnected. I might actually have to move it a little over. No, actually, it looks good. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, um, again, I want to make sure that the battery pack remains all lined up. So we're going to take this thing that we just peeled off and we're going to line this up here and stick that all into place. Okay, that way the battery pack will remain in place. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and put back all these screws that we took out. So we're still using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. We have the one screw up here. Get that one in. Okay, second one. We'll get up here. Okay, move this cable out of the way. Put that in. Okay, there we go. All right, then we had, I think these two are T5 as well. So we'll get those. That one and this one. All right, we'll wait for the T3 or Torx 3 screws until after we get the trackpad in. We can get the other two on this side. one there we go okay next thing we're gonna do we're gonna get the trackpad into place okay let's zoom out a bit here 
All right, so we're gonna carefully open this up. Actually, let's actually set this down first. Okay, so for the battery, now that we have all this in place, we can kind of lift this whole thing up, right? And then we're gonna peel off all the adhesive um, backings, okay? So just grab that, peel that off, all right? And we're gonna have to do this with all of them. Okay, and be very careful because if you drop this, it's going to stick down and you're not going to be able to reposition it. So you want to make sure that you get everything ready before you do that. If anything, you can actually do the middle one first, but I like, I want to make sure I'm going to get all of them done so I can get everything lined up perfectly. Okay, so there we go. We're going to slowly drop it back down just like this. Make sure this thing is keeping everything aligned and there we go. Okay, then you can go ahead and press down on it and it should hold itself in place. We're going to now peel this back again. Again, you roll this back just like this. There we go. And now the battery is holding itself in place. Now let's go ahead and do the trackpad. So we'll open this up slightly. Okay. And we're going to get the trackpad and slide it over. Again, you don't you want to be careful because those little washers will fall off really easily. And we'll get this back into place and we're going to slowly carefully lift the trackpad up and hold that into place so you'll know it's in right because it'll sit in and then you can see it wobbles around so we're not going to tighten the screws all the way down yet because we are going to have to um, align the trackpad all right so i'm going to hold on to this and then we're going to get the t5 screws torx 5 screws and we're going to do two corner ones first okay so we're going to do the one up in this corner first. All right. Again, we're not tightening it all the way down. We're just doing it so that you can still move this thing around. Okay. And get the second one corner here. Same thing. Get it into there. All right. There we go. You can see it can still wiggle around. Then carefully lower that back down. And let's get all the remaining screws back into place. Okay. All right, my camera viewfinder thing's all wobbly for some reason. Anyways, we'll get these screws in. Again, we're just loosely fitting these. You don't want to tighten them down all the way yet because we are going to have to make sure that this thing is lined up right before we stick it all down. Okay, where is this? Come on, go and screw. There we go. Again, we're just loosely fitting all these screws. Don't forget the one down here, the two down here. Okay. We're almost there. All right. All right. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to get this, flip that over. Let me see if I can scrape off the problems that are on there all right and I do want to put some um, adhesive back here okay so let me actually get some double stick adhesive here okay and you don't need too much you just put a little bit so it doesn't move around okay so get this double stick adhesive i don't know what kind apple uses but this is an acrylic adhesive okay all right so i got this and i'm just going to cut it in half so that way i can run it across the entire thing okay so oops i actually should have just done it long i was going to put like half half like that but anyways um, we're going to stick this like that Okay, and this adhesive is actually really strong. Oops, sorry. This adhesive is actually really strong, so I'm actually going to dirty it up a little bit by kind of um, just um, doing like this, okay? Because I don't want it to stick on there too strong and that if you remove it, it's just going to separate the battery layers too much, okay? So I'm going to peel that up. I'm going to peel this up. 
come on. Here we go. Yeah, she's sort of backing off. Okay, and then again, I'm just gonna like kind of dirty it, dirty it up a little bit because I don't want this adhesive to be too strong. Okay, be careful not to damage the cable. Okay, even then it's, <laughs> I feel it's gonna be too strong. But uh, do that, okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure the adhesive doesn't attach itself yet. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let me pull this back here so you can see. I'm gonna hold my hand here to prevent the adhesive from sticking down, and we're gonna reconnect the connector here first. Okay, make sure to get it lined up, and then push that into place. All right, now that we got that in place, we're gonna work our way from up here first. All right, and then we'll work our way down just like this. There we go. Okay, so now that's perfectly aligned. Um, let's go ahead and flip this thing over. I'm gonna fold this cable over here just so it doesn't get stuck on anything or damaged. Okay, let me put the adhesive tape stuff away. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and flip the MacBook over now. We're going to open it up. I probably should clean the top side for them as well. I'll probably do that with some rubbing alcohol or something later. Okay, so now we're going to line up the trackpad here. Okay, so usually what I do is I get two pieces of tape and I'll fold over a lip here so that way I can use that as a pull tab. All right, and then I'll stick the tape on and usually I'll find like the top, find the bottom. I know my nails are long, I use them for as tools, but I actually need to cut them like down by halfway. Anyways, we're gonna start all the way up. We'll pull it halfway back down, okay? And then kind of find the center. And you kind of do the same thing with the left and right, okay? So you find the left and right, the center, and then you kind of just stick it down. And we can adjust this later because I think it's like twisted a little, okay? And then you actually want to look from the top down. Um, so right now I'm looking at a weird, awkward angle, but uh, I guess the camera kind of helps me see at the right angle. So that looks like it's centered pretty well. Maybe this needs to be raised a tad bit. Okay, that looks to be centered. Now I'm gonna look myself from the top down and see it's a little bit too much to the left. So I need to actually Move it over to the right some. Okay. Just a tiny bit. Okay. And then you want to double check, make sure it looks good. Looks good. I'm going to close this, flip it over, and we're going to get all the trackpad screws back in. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten those down. And usually I'll do like the first four corners to make sure it doesn't wiggle around. All right, then we can go ahead and tighten down all the rest. All right. Last one. All right, and then make sure all these screws are tightened down. Good. Okay, let's go ahead and put back the remaining uh, T3 or Torx 3 screws. Okay, so we have this metal plate for the trackpad here. Alright, and I'm first going to loosely fit the screw. In there, just like that. Second one. And then tighten that down. Good. All right, let's get these other ones. This one here. Second one up here. All right, and the third and final one right here. Okay, so everything is good and lined up. We're done with the T3 Torx 3 screwdriver. Now we need the T5 Torx 5 screwdriver. 
I'm going to take the screwdriver and get that into there, line it up. And we'll just tighten that down. Okay. Have we already tightened these? Why does it seem like it's wobbling? Yeah, okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to get this cable in. So this one, they don't have the little piece of tape on it. Let me actually zoom in a bit more for you. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and slide this in. So you got to line it up. And then slide that in. All right. Make sure it's in all the way. You'll be able to see a little bit of the gold pins. That's normal. Then you just slide your finger over the latch to lock it down. And there we go. All right. Let's go ahead and put the little plastic cover thingy back on. Okay. So this piece, just line it up. I line up the circle with the screw there. Okay. And then I just tip it forward. Okay. And then I try and make sure this is flush there. And stick all of that down. Okay, there we go. We are going to have to plug this back in for it to turn on. If you don't plug the MacBook uh, in, it's actually not going to turn on. So keep that in mind. All right, so for testing, what we're going to do, we're just going to snap the bottom cover on like this. Okay, we're not actually going to slide it in yet. So we'll do that. Okay, we'll flip this over. And then we'll open up the screen. Take these pieces of tape out. Okay. And right now, you can see, oh, actually, it's turning on without me plugging in. That's the first. <laughs> Usually, you have to plug it in or it's not going to turn on. So let's see what's going to happen. Is it oh, okay? It's actually turning itself on. Um, yeah, normally, you have to plug it in or it's not going to turn on. And it actually turned on. Um, I'm going to do a PRAM and SMC reset. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this in. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is Control Option Shift on the left side, Power Button. The screen should go completely off. That means you did the SMC reset properly. Okay, next thing we're going to do is the PRAM reset. Oops, it already turned itself off. I'm going to hold the option key so it goes to the boot. Oh, I guess I was too late. Okay, um, and then we're going to do a restart. And then what we're going to do is after it's, the screen shuts off, Command Option PNR, hold those buttons down. Um, after it starts up, it should shut back off and then turn on a second time. Um, if you see the screen shut off, you can actually let go right away, and you should hear the chime go a second time. And that's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. Okay, it should be turning itself back on again. So we'll just wait for it, and there we go. Alright, so that should be it. We should be good to go. Let's go ahead and slide the bottom cover on properly. So we'll shut this down now. Okay, close this up. And let's go ahead and get the cover on right. So the way you get the cover on, since we didn't uh, slide it into place, we can actually pull up from this side. Normally you can't do that because these metal latches actually latch into the little grooves here. Okay. So what we're going to do, you want to line up the side edges here. Okay. Make sure both sides are lined up and we're having it slid down a little bit. Once you do that, hold this edge here so that those clips can slide up. And then I use my thumb down here. Okay, to push up to slide it. And same thing with this side, hold this down, use your thumb, slide it up. Usually this will form a gap, slide it up again, and then you can push up here one more time just to make sure. Um, you wanna check that this is lined up. If you can see here, there's a gap more on this side than this side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and use the two nubs here to kind of slide it over. And there you go, you can see it slid into place. So that's good. All right, now that we got everything lined up, we're just gonna click the sides click the middle and then we're going to get all the screws back in and that's pretty much all there is to it hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living but um yeah that's pretty much it you're welcome to stay as i get all the rest of the screws in but yeah I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Let's get these back in. All right. Thanks for watching. And let's drop this. Bye.